Alrighty, folks, so picking up where we left off the other day, pretty sure we did gaining stream and losing stream. Uh, we were talking about, um, you know, basically the water table. Uh, and speaking of the water table, that leads us to here, and I've got to now unzoom. So on the screen, you can see it. Subsidence. You've heard of subsidence. You may have even used the word subside. Um, so you've got a general idea of what it means. And I, I know what it means, obviously, but I have a hard time believing this slide. But I also have a hard time believing that that little old man would be lying to us. So what's going on here? Um, it's obviously 1977, as you can see by the photo. And he is quite a little old man. Uh, in fact, it looks exactly like I remember my great-grandfather looking in, in probably about the same year. A um, little old Italian guy with a, with a whole bunch of stuff in his pocket and a silly little hat and, and a short sleeve dress shirt because everyone wore short sleeve dress shirts back then. Um, this is in California, though, not Ohio. And looks like they're growing grapes there. Grapes, as you may or may not know, uh, need a pull out of water. That's more or less what they're full of, right? Um, so, anywho, so 1977, we see 1955, and we see 1925. And again, it's quite likely, depending on when he immigrated, uh, that he has been there that whole time, 50 years-ish. What I'm getting out of this slide is that the ground used to be up where the 1925 sign is. And then in 1955, for whatever reason, they, they, they marked you know, that era. And now in 77, it's all the way down there. Tie that into the vocabulary word here of subsidence. And uh, the implication is that the ground has sunk that much. But why would it be? You know, that's the thing. But why would it be? Well, okay, yeah, so there is that. Obviously, a new telephone pole. And arguably, there wasn't a telephone pole there in 1925. Maybe it was a telegraph pole, right? But, um, but yeah, no, I, I get that point. But um, they have other relative landmarks, I'm sure, that they could have used. So, yeah, they're a different telephone pole. I, I, I got you there. Um, so this is San Joaquin Valley. I'm talking to you about grapes. Um, one semester years ago, some student raised their hand, possibly a Californian or whatever. They're like, San Joaquin Valley is, 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 is much, is more likely they're growing avocados there. I'm like, uh, okay. Either way. And I kind of thought avocados were trees, not like shrubby vines, but whatever. Uh, back then I was still pronouncing this Joaquin because we hadn't really uh, learned the Joaquin Phoenix yet or how to pronounce that word. Uh, at any rate, so San, the San Joaquin Valley there. And uh, the idea is that the ground is compacted that much from the removal of groundwater. Now, we know that water boils stuff up. We know that uh, when something is full of water, it's swelled up, it's a little higher. We know a whole, a whole lot of stuff. And we also know that some settling occurs during shipping, right? Uh, I remember being disappointed quite a lot as a child when I finally able to talk to my parents and get me a nice big box of that sugar cereal or whatever, and I get home and there's actually only like this much in the box as opposed to that whole box full. And uh, as I used to sit there and read cereal boxes because we didn't have phones to stare at when I was growing up, um, you see things like some settling occurs during shipping. The idea being that they've got a, a whole production line full of boxes with bags in them. Uh, they open up the hopper door, a whole bunch of flakes pour into the bag, and it gets sealed off by another machine, moves on, but by the time it gets packaged, moved, da, 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 gets to your store shelf, all of that shaking stuff settles into place. All right? To use a word from the other day, we're reducing a whole lot of pore space. I get it. But this is still hard to believe. Yes. <laughs> I said, a little old time, man. Um, 
It's funny, I just found a picture of my great grandfather and my great grandmother, too. And I, cause I've been saying this for years. I said, oh my God, that's my great grandfather. But, um, <laughs> no, he never left Hubbard, Ohio. I can tell you that. Except when he probably came over from the boat in the Manhattan, but not California area. Um, so, anywho, another word where we, we hear about subsidence a lot, again, not so much you guys. Uh, but say 10 years ago, 15 years ago when I was teaching this class, remember when New Orleans flooded? You guys were young, but yeah, during the hurricane. Um, New Orleans is essentially a soup bowl, okay, uh, because of its, its geography or its topography, I should say. Um, so the flood, the waters came in with the hurricane. Uh, what, what walls that they did still have standing, um, basically just kept all the water in there. They're supposed to keep the water out, but that didn't work out. Uh, it was it was a mess. So we heard about, you just trust me on this one, we heard about the area down there, Louisiana and New Orleans in particular, for the next year in the news. And one of the things that we heard about is that, you know, they're trying to throw blame as politicians and others and everyone will, will do um, in every direction except themselves. And I, I'm not saying who's to blame who's not to blame. It's, it's neither here nor there at this point. But one of the things that we heard constantly about is that Louisiana is sinking. It's subsiding. They kept using the word subsidence. And that's not exactly what's going on there at all. What's going on there is actually what we've been talking about in class is weathering and erosion. Uh, what river comes right down there into the Gulf? Anybody know? The Mississippi, all right? And the Mississippi is hugely important. It goes all the way up north. And we send boatloads. It's, it's hard to believe this day and age that they still ship a whole lot of stuff on boats and trains because of all the semi-trucks everywhere, but they do. So the, the, the Mississippi is a huge route of commerce. Um, decades ago, they started with the Army Corps engineers um, one of their constant projects is to dredge the stream up, get all the sediment out of it so we can keep those big old barges coming up and down it. All right, so let's shift back down to the other end of the stream. We're actually going to go to this chapter next, but um, just a little foreshadowing, I guess. Now we're down at the, uh, the bay there, and what's going on? The waves are constantly hitting the shoreline. Waves erase, okay? They're just giant erasers. Rivers are supposed to transport stream, uh, stream. Rivers are supposed to transport sediment. So for however long we've been going on here on this planet, um, or at least since the Mississippi's been there, sediment has been coming down there, and waves have been eating away at it. And it's kept it out of balance, and arguably sediment has won for a while. Because Mississippi, you know, grew and then grew and grew and grew. Not Mississippi, uh, Louisiana. It is a lot of sediment playing out there. However, once we started monkeying around with things, as we tend to do, um, we stopped the flow of sediment, and now we're only erasing. Okay? So, Louisiana is not subsiding, it is being erased uh, because we're controlling the sediment. And again, they don't want to admit that because, well, the government, again, is, is responsible for the reason that it's being erased. And it's a good reason, arguably, we need our cheap Chinese stuff coming up the, the Mississippi there, and wherever it's coming from in the world nowadays, I shouldn't say that necessarily, but wherever it's coming from in the world, our oranges from South America, our, our electronics from whatever country they come from, we need all that, all right? But it is messing things up uh, with regards to that. So subsidence is a real thing, but uh, we misuse the term uh, with some frequency. Short story long. Karst. Karst. Just like uh, the self-flowing well, a huge one, well, was named after somewhere in France. Karst is a German word, so for whatever reason they first noticed this or first wrote about it somewhere in, in Germany. Um, Karst describes uh, the reason that you guys all went to house taverns uh, in third grade and in fifth grade or whenever you went to house taverns. Uh, Karst refers to the fact that water dissolves limestone and leaves behind really cool stuff when it doesn't collapse and kill a bunch of people. 
Um, you see the bricks there. Remember, bricks indicate limestone, so even if this wasn't labeled, you would know that that is water in limestone bedrock. Rock is cold, it's cracked. Water gets in those cracks. Water dissolves rock. Water really dissolves limestone. And that's all fine and dandy as long as the water remains in there. Because again, water buoys things up. It holds them up. It's, it's, it's like a water buoy. It fills it up. However, when the water level drains, like you see in the bottom picture there, we are left with giant pockets. Oftentimes, it's not a problem at all. And as we said, oftentimes we go and explore. Caving, lots of people love to go into caves. And they are pretty cool. I get a bit claustrophobic myself, not horribly fond of them, but arguably they are quite cool. Especially when they interact with the coast, okay? And you get all those cool stories about smugglers hiding their rum and the pirates and their gold and all that stuff. I'll take Greenies if you want to for a minute there. Um, but so that whole process and everything that's associated with it is called karst or karst topography, okay? And as part of that, we see any number of things uh, like stalactites and stalagmites. Now, I don't know about you guys, but as a student, I could never keep these straight. I didn't have hopeful teachers like you guys the other day. Mike, what? They might grow tall one day. That's good. My helpful teacher said mites like bugs and bugs will crawl on it. And I'm like, all right. Well, now, oh, I've got a good, I've got a good one too. So if, if you don't know the difference, you guys, they might grow tall one day. But yeah, so they're like mites, like bugs. And I'm like, okay, there's bugs on the floor and on the ceiling. That doesn't really help me. Um, so eventually, I learned stalactite sea ceiling. Stalagmite G ground. Whatever works for you. They're dripstones, okay? Uh, and that might seem hard to believe again that, 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 that this much calcite, because that's what limestone is made out of, right? This much calcite could build up over time. But again, think about uh, if you've ever been somewhere and they had an iron deposit in their sink or their toilet. It's the same idea. But over a whole lot of time. And drip, drip, drip. So you get the drip from the ceiling, forming the stalactite. Okay, holding tight to that ceiling. And then you get on the bottom underneath it, the stalagmite where it builds up as well. And eventually they can, sometimes, long enough, they can grow together and form what we call a, a column. Now, House Caverns doesn't have stalactites and stalagmites per se. They've got a whole lot more of it's just a, gen a generic kind of catch-all term. We call them dripstone formations. Um, I, it, to me, it looks like a bunch of wedding cakes in there. It's just so cool. Um, but the flowstone, I'm sorry, yeah, flowstone, not dripstone. Drip is the other thing. Flowstone, it works the same way. Oh, but they have those neat little straws. And it, I'm so tempted to touch them, but they're like, please don't touch the straws on the ceiling. Uh, so you get those, but it wasn't really growing full on stalactite side. You could have one or two. But mostly it was that flowstone stuff. So again, um, we get a lot of neat stuff with karst, okay? Uh, there is a dark side to karst, which we'll talk about in a minute. But generally speaking, it gives us um, these cool little caves, and we go and explore them and see the stalactites and the stalagmites. Disappearing screen, you see in the center of the screen there is another thing. Um, but, um, but going back to Goonies for a minute, and uh, I grew up on the Great Lakes, so we used to hear about all the Prohibition Rum Runner stories. They bring stuff over from Canada and whatnot. Uh, again, Ohio, Michigan, uh, even, again, much of New York is all limestone. So undoubtedly, uh, we had, you know, caves there, um, and they were, were filled up. You go to the coastline, though, you throw in tides into the mix. So again, you go back to your pirate stories about... Um, you know, this, this secret cave that's only uh, uh, accessible during the lowest low tide kind of thing. Uh, so you picture two guys rowing in on a boat and, um, you know, one time a year, twice a year, whatever, and uh, being able to access this, this secret treasure spot. Uh, and, and again, that is well within reason. An entire pirate ship? I love 
duties, but that's a stretch. Okay, that is a stretch. Um, but uh, again, you know, these these caves are all along the coast, especially Florida. Florida is is nothing but uh, old coral reef, which is again limestone. Um, it's just riddled with stuff like this. So, um, not a hundred percent made up. Sometimes, in many cases. So karst, water and limestone. Yeah, and then there's sinkholes. It's kind of hard to get scale on this. Um, I usually refer people to the road over there. And I think that it is a four lane road. Two going one way, two going the other way. It doesn't look like there's a turning lane there. Might be, might be a five lane road. Um, it's a big hole. Sinkholes happen again when you have a large area that has been eaten away uh, by, by the water over time. And uh, for some reason, once that water drains out, um, the pressures of whatever's above, it, it finally just gives up. Okay, the rock is strong, the rock is durable, but it, you know, when we go and put stuff on top of it, it's all you can do. The problem is, is you don't often get notice of stuff like this. You'll see. Sometimes there's a little bit of sagging, for lack of a better word, that happens, and sometimes it just goes. Um, it hasn't made the news in a while. Uh, the last one came out of Florida. It took, uh, you know, half a neighborhood. And, um, some poor guy was in it. It was during the day, so like most people were at work, so on and so forth. But uh, there was a stir. One guy was in the news. One guy was asleep in his bed. Apparently, he worked the night shift or whatever. Um, and he's forever uh, entombed in there. But uh, yeah, sinkholes really stink. Um, this is another word we've sort of misused. I haven't heard it uh, in a while here in Utica, but every so often you'll see on the news that a, uh, you know, something along the lines of, in downtown Utica today, a uh, uh, sinkhole opened up in the middle of Main Street and a UPS truck fell into the into the earth. Um, it's not from Karst. Arguably, we could borrow the word sinkhole, but it's not because of Karst. What's going on there, and you see this again in the older towns, is you've got your water lines and your sewer lines running through. And they're old, and they leak. You know that flowing water moves sediment. So what's been happening is little by little, for Lord knows how many years, the leaky pipes have been eating out the sediment underneath the road. And it just takes one poor sap pulling up, go to subway, lift, leaves his truck on the curb one day, comes back out to find it in the road when he comes back. Um, again, it, it happens with some frequency. But it's not a sinkhole per se. It definitely sucks, but it's not a sinkhole. Um, so... But yeah. So this was either a giant factory or a plaza. Like you're still, since you're still staring at this image. And I think that's a trailer uh, down about the center bottom. Again, trying to get some scale there. Or it's an air conditioning unit off of one of the roofs. Not sure which. Big, big, big hole. All right. So that winds up the, uh, winds up the groundwater unit. Um, from here, we are quite likely to go on to streams, and uh, we've got glaciers as well. I might ask you guys, uh, if, if I decide that we have to pick and choose whether you'd rather talk about glaciers uh, or streams, but they're all part of our uh, water unit. So uh, we've got just a few lectures left, remember, and uh, we want to make the most out of it, and like I said, maybe hit on some topics that you guys... Uh, want to hear about. We also have earthquakes. We never talked about earthquakes, but we can still do that too. So start thinking about what uh, you, you hoped or thought maybe we'd talk about in here. And uh, if we haven't gotten to it yet, maybe I'll try to remember to start Tuesday that way. Okay.